So I have got this book, uh, Encyclopedia of Country Living. Hopefully you guys can see that. And it's got, it says the original manual for country living skills. And a friend let me borrow this a long time ago. And I just went through my books and I found them and I said, well, or I found it and I said, well, I guess I should probably look into it and see what's in there and get it back to them. And uh, I found some good stuff in here that, you know, I've always wondered. So I figured if I wondered, maybe somebody else has wondered as well. So I thought today we'd talk about companion planting with a few different herbs and flowers and finding out whether they're annuals or perennials. So if they'll come back again or not, um, what you can use them for. I don't want them just to be in the garden to help with insect control and things like that. I actually want them to, um, you know, be beneficial in other places like to make tinctures and to make teas and things like that. You know, might as well be useful besides just working in the garden, which is a wonderful thing as well. <clears throat> so companion plants improve the growth and flavor of your foods or of your plants that are outside in your garden. So um, I wanted to start with, I have a little list here of things that I did skip a couple um, because they can be poisonous and I don't even want to touch base on that. Um, there is one in here that I was like, eh, you know, should I even talk about it? But um, I think it's beneficial. So, uh, and always, I'm not a professional, I'm not an expert at this. Um, anything that you hear me talk about, do your own research, look it up, see if it's gonna work in your garden, in your area, in your growing zone. Um, just because I talk about it here and kind of explain a little bit about it, I'm just touching on the high spots of what I am interested in as far as what they do. So we're gonna start with, um, and I'm going to read off here and then I have notes that I'm going to read off from as well. And then I'll also put pictures up here showing what the plants look like and maybe, uh, you know, highlight some of the things that I talk about. So, uh, the first one is anise, A-N-I-S-E. It says it helps coriander. So this is an annual plant that you would plant with your coriander. Um, and it, what you can use it for is Italian uh, Italian dishes. <laughs> um, so you'd probably want to dry it and then, you know, put it in your Italian dishes um, of some sort. Uh, basil. Most people are familiar with basil, but maybe some people are not. So basil helps tomatoes, repels flies and mosquitoes. That's a good thing to have in the garden. Um, and probably you all know other, uh, when I read these off and just, again, just touching base on certain things because I don't want to make this a three hour long video and I'm sure you don't either. Um, you probably know, put down in the comments what other um, things these are good for or maybe you know one that's even better um, that we should be talking about here. So basil is an annual, uh, it comes in different sizes and flavors. Um, I just got a free pack of seeds from Mary Heirloom Seeds that's lemon basil, and I am going to be planting that this year. Um, so I'm excited, I've never had lemon basil. And uh, this one I didn't write down what it's good for. Basil's good in Italian dishes. Basil's good for lots of different things. Um, so you'll, you know, again, look up if you're interested in any of these and, um, you can find out more information about them. So bee balm, I have bee balm here. It helps tomatoes. There are different kinds of bee balm. I have um, two, two or three different plants, and I think I think they're all different. I'm not sure, um, but they they the color is different. So so they're also they're a perennial, um, and they're also called bergamot, Oswego tea, and Mona, monadra, monad, monarda, monarda. There we go. Uh, hopefully I said that right. Sorry if I butcher any of the words. 
Um, and so I love bee balm. My bees love bee balm. Um, and I did not put down what it's good for as far as um, uh, it helps your tomatoes, but I didn't, um, I don't know if you could dry it and eat it. I did not put any of that information down because um, I just like it for my bees. So I don't usually um, uh, pick it and uh, do anything with it except for keep it out for my bees and butterflies and stuff. So Borage says it helps tomatoes, squash, and strawberries and deters tomato worms, which is a good thing because a lot of people have problems with that. Um, and so why wouldn't you want it? And Borage, I think I talked about this in a different video about my seeds that I got because I did get some Borage seeds for free from maybe Zerloom seeds, not sure, somewhere anyways. And I was like, that name is just terrible for that um that plant because it is very pretty plant um but anyway it's it's uh you know if they could come up with a prettier name for that <laughs> i'm sure there's a reason uh for it but anyway uh that is an annual um and it's cucumber flavored leaves flowers can be eaten leaves and flowers can be eaten so that's pretty cool to know that um so that's a useful uh companion plant so it keeps away your worms and you can eat it if you want to as well calendula uh says deals with uh well with asparagus beetles and tomato worms etc so things like that so i'm wondering if it would work if it works for beetles i wonder if it would work for the cucumber bugs and beetles that we get so I'm going to try that this year. I'm going to plant, um, I don't have any, so I'm going to try to, try to find some, but I'm going to try to plant some calendula and see if that will keep those bugs away because I do have a problem with those, with my cucumbers and uh, uh, squash. So uh, it says, it is a variety of a marigold. Uh, flowers and leaves can be eaten in soups, salads, and this one can be used in ointments for wounds and ulcers as well. So, and this is an annual. So that's a really awesome, I think, companion plant to be able to put in the ground. Um, chamomile, it says it helps cabbages and onions. And chamomile is great in tea. I don't think I have this written down, but I do know that chamomile is a very soothing uh, plant, so. So this chamomile or chamomile, everybody calls it different. It is a perennial, so it'll come back. Um, it says garden or, um, let's see, or sweet false chamomile. Oh, there's a garden chamomile and a sweet false chamomile. Um, they're unrelated um, and they look very different for the most part. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Caraway, caraway loosens soil. It probably does other things as well, but if you have a no-till garden, having something that'll loosen your soil up and make it easier for your plants to get their roots out and grow a sturdier plant, I think that's a good thing. Um, and it says it's a biannual and an annual. So what it does biannually is every other year it will make its seeds and then the next year it will bloom. So you're always getting your new seeds to plant, give away, sell, whatever you wanna do. <clears throat> uh, let's see, the next one is, uh, sh I'm not sure the saying of this, it says Shervil, C-H-E-R-V-I-L, Shervil, I believe is what it is. And it helps radish, radishes. No, I don't plant radishes, I know a lot of people do. Um, we don't use that around here, so um, I probably should, it's probably good for you, but um, it's an annual. Um, it says, uh, a French parsley, it has a mild seasoning, highly nutritious superfood. So, hey, shrivel, shrivel, sounds great to me. Um, let's see, and the next one, okay, that one we're going to skip. 
and we're gonna go to dead nettle. Um, now dead nettle is in the mint family um, and dead nettle, it holds back potato bugs. So that's awesome. I know a lot of people have trouble with that. Again, I wonder if that would hold back um, the uh, cucumber beetles and things like that. Um, I don't know, but it's worth a shot to try it. Um, so it's part of the mint family. It resembles the stinging nettle, but they don't sting. So they don't have the little prickles or whatever they are. Uh, the leaves are edible in soups, salads, and smoothies. So that's interesting. Very cool. Um, the next one is uh, dill. So dill helps cabbage, harms carrots. So you don't want to plant your dill near your carrots, according to this book. Um, it is a perennial. I'm sorry, it's an annual, if I could read my own writing. Um, it's an annual and used for soups, salads, vinegar, and pickles. So that's pretty cool. All right. The next one is fennel. So fennel, it says, deters other plants, um, plant away from the garden. So you don't want to plant your fennel near the garden. This is a biannual. It has a number of varieties uh, used for substitute for a dill plant, but with dill, you can plant it with your cabbage and stuff, but this fennel, evidently you cannot, or you shouldn't. Um, it likes different soil than dill. Uh, it likes a more al alkaline um, soil. Uh, it's good for apple recipes and flavored candies and tea. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, garlic. I planted garlic last fall. As far as I know, it's doing well. We still, some places the ground is still frozen and there it's still frozen. So um, it was coming up very well in the fall, so we'll see. But I didn't know that it helps raspberries and protects roses from aphids, Japanese beetles, and rose bugs. I did not know that. So that's very cool. Okay, we're going on to geranium. It is avoided by beetles. So it kind of deters the beetle, I guess. Um, and Japanese beetles are a pain in the butt. So um, I guess it's a good thing to have around. Geraniums can be a perennial. Uh, there is a big family of geraniums. So I guess it depends on which kind. Again, do your research on which ones in your area would work best for you. Um, and it says you can also use the geraniums in sachets, um, potpourri, perfumes, and flavored drinks. That's pretty cool. Okay, horseradish. Horseradish, if I can say it. Deters potato, plug, potato bugs <laughs> and plants, uh, oh, plant in the corners of your potato patch. So horse, horseradish deters potato bugs. That's really cool to know. It is also a perennial. Uh, let's see, relative of um, the mustard. So horseradish is a relative of the mustard. Leaves can be used in sandwiches like ham and cheese. So if you don't have mustard, go pick some horseradish and put it on there. Um, okay, so the next one is high sop, H-Y-S-S-O-P. It is friendly with grapes and cabbage, deters, deters cabbage moth and keeps away keeps them away from radishes. So again, uh, if you're planting radishes, grapes, or cabbage, that may be good for, for that. Uh, hysop is a perennial. It's also good for sinuses and chest problems. Again, look it up how to deal with that. I don't really know. I don't know if you have to boil it down, if you dry it, I'm not really sure. It says it's great for bees, which I'm glad to know. Uh, birds like the seeds, and it flavors sausage and stuffed meat like pork or to flavor soups. So that sounds like a really cool herb to, to be growing. Uh, let's see. The next one is lovage. Never heard of lovage before. 
but it helps other plants. Don't really know much about that. Um, so I looked it up and it says it's a perennial. It is a uh, long been cultivated in Europe and the leaves are an herb. Um, it's a root, root vegetable and the seeds are spicy. Uh, they're like fennel and it boosts digestion. So that's very interesting. Seeds and leaves taste like celery, use sparingly. So I don't have celery around here, but I do cook a lot of soups and stuff that I use celery in, um, and I don't always have it. So I'm wondering if that would be a good thing to have around and just use a little bit at a time because it says use sparingly, so you probably wanna do that. But that's kind of cool. Okay, the next one is marigold. Marigold, a lot of people know that to use it in the garden. It does work very well. It said it is the workhorse of the pest deterrence. Plant it throughout your garden. Um, it discourages Mexican bean beetles, nematodes, and other insects. So marigolds are a great thing to have. Um, they are an annual, so you would have to plant them every year. Uh, petals are good for salads, tea, and casseroles. Thought that was very interesting. Um, let's see, what are we on to next? On to parsley. Parsley is good for tomatoes. Parsley is a biannual. There are different varieties of parsley. Um, it's eaten like celery. Another one like um, uh, the uh, Lovage, the celery flavor. You may want to put that in your soups. So it's low calorie leaves contain vitamins, minerals, uh, like A and C, which is great. Uh, you add to stew, meat, soups, and salads. It shouldn't be cooked um, and it can be good for bad breath. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really sure why it shouldn't be cooked. I don't know if it's because it loses its, its vitamins. A lot of things lose their vitamins when they're boiled down in water and cooked. So I'm not really sure. Again, look it up if you want to know more about that. Petunias, I really like petunias. Um, they are good with beans, or good for beans. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. It says uh, they are an annual. Uh, they like um, brassicas, beans, basil, tomatoes, grapes, corn, and peppers. So that's pretty cool. Although they are not edible, and they're members of the nightshade family. Nightshade is another one that was on here that I skipped because that can be very dangerous, can make you sick, hallucinogenic, and intake enough of it, it can kill you. Um, so do not eat petunias, but they are very pretty. I plant them or I buy them every year and um, I really like them. But I didn't know that I could use them in my garden to, uh, to help with the different vegetables that I'm growing. Okay, so the next one is rosemary. Uh, rosemary is good with sage, which is cool. So perennial, uh, widest range of uses. Bees love it, um, good to know. I always wanna know what I can help my bees and butterflies and hummingbirds um, thrive around here. Uh, uses are perfumes, uh, hair rinse, potpourri, fresh or dried seasoning for food. So rosemary is a really good thing to have around. And last but not least, sage um, is good with broccoli, carrots, Brussels sprouts, and peas. Um, and sage is a perennial. Uh, it has numerous varieties. So there are many varieties of sage. Again, look it up to find out what kind that you would like uh, if you wanna add that to your garden. It adds flavor to pickles, cheese, uh, sausage, poultry, pork stuffing, um, and tea. So I thought those were all very interesting in this book. There are a few other things that I'll probably do videos on to try and help out, but hopefully that helps some of you guys in planning your gardens and what you have problems with, with bugs. Um, and maybe some of these things will help with that. So, um, Anyway, again, down in the description, if you have any uh, suggestions on different herbs, flowers, plants 
that would be good in the garden to help deter some bugs. You've used it and it works well for you. Um, maybe it'll work well for somebody else. We can help somebody else in their garden. So um, anyway, happy planting. Take care guys, like, share, subscribe, and have a great day.